So, two years ago, I actually went ahead and I quit video games. But if you take a look at my channel right now, quite a bit of those videos that I'm making are gaming videos. So what happened? Has my video game addiction returned? Well, actually, it's a very interesting story because while I'm playing games again, I'm not playing the same games and my addiction is non-existent at this point. My attitude towards gaming has changed dramatically. So let me share with you the story of how this happened. Two years ago, I made a video of me quitting video games and I was serious about it. I sold my Xbox and my PlayStation and my Wii U and basically any other console I had at that point that was causing my video game addiction because I was very addicted to gaming at that point because I grew up a gamer. Games are my entire life. I love video games and I love gaming with friends. That's the best part about video games for me is gaming with friends. Now the thing is, at that point in my life, a lot of my friends left video games because they left to the military or some of them had to do hardcore studying at university or some of them had full-time jobs, one of them even got married. So I lost all my gaming friends and I was still gaming because I loved video games. But I didn't game to game with friends anymore. I gamed for new reasons. I had to find new reasons of what made what made gaming fun. And at that point, it was achievement hunting, grinding, and pretty much doing the mundane tasks of, I, um, I don't know how to, how, to, how are they called? I'd consider them like time-based management games is what I'd consider them, where you click on something and they say, come back in eight hours and click it again. That way you made progress. And those were the games that really sucked up my life because I, I was achievement hunting and that was fun up to a point where the achievements I was trying to get were mundane and grindy and some of those I started to back off to. But the new thing that I found was those time management games and I got sucked into a lot of them, a, a little too much of them. And it came to a point where I wake up in the morning and the first thing I do is I go to my Xbox and I turn it on and I, I go through my like six management games that I had to. And then uh, not only that, nowadays games have um, a daily thing, daily quests, daily challenges that you have to log in. And it's like, hey, get three kills or win three multiplayer matches as this character. And I actually took those seriously as a completionist, as a grinder. And those were the things that were ruining my life because of course you could get them done and then move on with your day. But then you get things like you're doing the challenge and you fail it and then you have to keep attempting at it or else you're not gonna complete it. And that's what sucked my life is hunting down those challenges and those time management games. I wake up in the morning, sometimes I'd even set my alarm earlier so I could wake up, launch the games that I needed manage my time assets, and then see how much, oh, 12 hours? And I set a timer on my phone for 12 hours, and in 12 hours, I'm gonna have to come back and check on my Xbox again. As soon as I realized that that was controlling my life, I said, nope, no more. I, I'm done with video games, and the best thing that I could possibly do there is quit cold turkey. That's why I went ahead and I sold all of my video games. And because of that, I had this, suddenly this life-changing experience where I actually made a video about it called The Nine Benefits of Quitting Video Games. And in that video, I just talk about things that I started doing new in my life. And some of those things are suddenly you start caring about your body more, you start caring about uh, hanging out with your friends and family, you learn new hobbies, like I got, I got guitars back there. My sleeping schedule is finally normal because I don't have to wake up for anything to manage anything. I wake up when I need to. And my priorities for the day are focus on me and video games weren't even a thought. And that's, that's what I loved about it. But quitting video games also had a disadvantage. And my disadvantage was after six months, my friends came back to video games because they were in areas of their life where they were able to play again. <clears throat> Excuse me. And when I quit video games, I actually started hanging out more often with my friends and 
we actually developed new activities such as playing table tennis and basketball and if I look over here, <laughs> Dungeons and Dragons. Like, this is the best game I've ever played. It's better than any video game ever. So quitting video games was amazing and my life completely changed by quitting video games. But six months later, again, my friends got to a point where they're able to play and I have a lot of friends in other states and countries where I can't see them very often. And the downside for quitting video games was that I lost communication with them. I don't talk to them one-on-one -on, -one on Skype calls or whatever. I don't have the ability to spend all the money to go visit them or, or they come down to me. So video games was our way of sort of keeping that group together and staying friends, really close friends. And I lost that when I quit video games. So six months down the line, those friends went ahead and they bought me a game called Player Battlegrounds Unknown. And they said, hey, we want, we want to play this with you because it's been six months and we really miss you. So I said, screw it. And I installed the game and I played it with them. And it was really enjoyable. Now, it didn't tie me into video games. Like, I, like I, I didn't play the game and then boom, I'm, I got addicted again. It was, wow, I really missed playing with friends. I didn't care about the player battlegrounds, unknowns, daily challenges, or what, or grinding for their boxes, whatever. I just cared about playing with friends, and that's what the magic was. So just like going over to your friend's house and playing Smash Brothers or Mario Party, I slowly started to play games as a group with friends. I didn't care about addictive games. I didn't care about grinding. There are a couple games that I've dipped into, like. Final Fantasy and Black Desert Online, where they kind of want you to grind, and the moment I feel that grind, and the moment I feel those games want to control my life, and I'm not having as much fun with friends as I do with other games, those are the games I play for a bit, and then I quit, because I don't want to get tied into being addicted to a game again. Because I found out what games mean to me. Gaming means to me is having a great time with friends. Friends that you can't always hang out with because they're far away or long distance. It's just another activity that you can have a great time with. So as I slowly started to dip into playing games again, most of the games that I liked playing with my friends were, I would consider non-addictive games because you don't have to log in every single day to those games. You, It's not a must to finish your challenges to stay at a specific level or else your friends surpass you. It's games where it's drop in, drop out, and just goof around. Those are the magical games that I figured out what was so fun about gaming. The, the specific thing that I was missing about video games. And if you take a look at my channel and some of the video game videos that I've been uploading, a lot of it is Rainbow Six Siege or Dead by Daylight or Sea of Thieves. They're games where we jump in and we goof off, we have a great time, we log off. Done. No addictive tendencies, doesn't change my sleeping schedule, video games aren't n the number one priority anymore. But it's it was a journey I had to get to because as I came back to video games, there were times where, again, I dipped into addictive games and it those games did start to become priority. But as soon as I realized those games took a lot more priority in my life than other things. Those are the games I quit. I also learned time management when I quit video games because I learned that we don't always have the same amount of willpower that we do throughout the day. And our, our willpower depletes. It's like a battery or a health bar that goes down. And when I started to get re-addicted into games, sometimes I first thing in the morning, I'll play with my friends that are uh, somewhere else with a different time zone and while that was fun it actually affected the rest of my day because starting with my starting the day with video games could be fun but then you you have to do other activities throughout the day and then the rest of the day you start losing your willpower to actually do chores or work on your health and get things done in general so I noticed when I start the day with video games and then I get work done, it's the work that I do isn't 
as great quality and I don't put as much time and attention into it as it needs to. So while I did come back to video games, I changed a lot of my attitude on playing them. I don't play video games until it's the end of the day and I don't play video games unless I see a big group of my friends online because that's what gaming is for me is having a, a, a fantastic, ridiculous time with your friends. And again, if you take a look at my channel, that's kind of what my videos of video games are, is my friends and I just goofing off and having a great time. I made this video because I'm getting a lot of questions in the comments lately of my other videos asking why I return to video games, because obviously people have noticed uh, a lot of my ridiculous video game videos being uploaded. and. This is just my big explanation is I found what games mean to me and I don't regret quitting uh, quitting video games. Quitting video games, I, especially cold turkey and selling all my consoles, that's something that I had to do. It's something that I had to do to realize my potential and what video games are and how to balance them in my life. Because while I'm playing video games again, they're, again, they're not priority. They don't control my sleeping schedule anymore. And they don't take time away from hanging out with friends physically. Because when I quit video games, I started doing more physical activities with friends. And that habit stayed, and my friends like that habit. And again, nowadays, where every weekend or every other weekend, we have our Dungeons and Dragons game that we we all get together and play. So I don't regret quitting video games. It's something that I had to do. And I don't regret coming back to video games because I'm not the same person that I was when I came back to video games. I know a lot of you are also thinking about going through the same journey because you realized how addictive you are with video games. And my advice to you is figure out why you play. Is it your escape? Is it is it you do it to relax? Or was it for me? I, I strictly wanted to do it for a good time with friends. The whole grinding and achievement thing was just a distraction as I was trying to find an activity that would fill the void of my missing friends. But now that they're all back, um, I'm having fun with video games more than ever because again, they don't control me, I control them. If you enjoyed watching this video, then consider Tony sticking that subscribe button Tony sticking that subscribe button. I don't, that's very cheesy, but I don't know if it's gonna stick yet. Anyways, until then, have a fantastic day. So, ow.